Hold on to your hats, guys. I think you're really gonna like this one. So we're gonna start a little video series here. I'm gonna film everything and then break it up into different sections for you. And I'm really excited about this particular series of videos because I wanna show you something I've never shown you before. I know I've been preaching to you guys about plastic totes. Man, it is bright in here. I, I know I've been preaching to you guys about plastic totes for over a year now, and I've been showing you all kinds of propagation methods in these totes. But I wanna tell you something right now. I haven't told you the full story. So I've been holding out on you a little bit, and I hope you guys don't get too upset, but I'm gonna make up for all of that right here in this video series. So I use those plastic totes as experiments because they're really easy, they're really fun to work with, they're small, they're lightweight, you can move them around, do whatever you want with them. But for all of my production, for anything where I'm trying to produce a large amount of plants and I want it to be foolproof and I want it to just work, I use a little bit different system and I'm gonna show you guys how to build that system and use it right now and it works perfectly for softwood cuttings. So we're gonna head out there in a sec, but I wanna tell you guys that this is way better than the plastic totes ever were. If you guys have had problems with fungal issues or, you know, root rot or, you know, well, you wouldn't have root rot in a propagation tote, but, you know, rotting of any kind, fungus issues, um, too much water sitting in there, you know, whatever issues you're having with your propagation tote that's not working, this solves all of them. This is a simple system. Anybody can throw it together in a short amount of time. It will last for years, and it's a lot of fun to work with. I mean, the percentage rates of actually getting cuttings to root in this little setup are through the roof compared to any of these plastic totes. So let's get started on this, guys. Let's go have some fun. All right, guys, so this is the whole system right here. So I've got two frames here, and in fact, I've got a third frame, but I may or may not use it. I haven't decided yet. But the, the cool part about having two separate frames is that you can actually stack them up on top of each other and make them taller, make them shorter, whatever you need to do, depending on what types of plants you're propagating. The other thing I have here is a piece of glass. You can't see it because glass is see-through. <laughs> so let me get to the edge here. You see that? This is a piece of tempered glass that I actually went to just a glass shop that, that made different sized pieces of glass for windshields, homes, all kinds of stuff like that. And I, I purchased this piece and then paid for them to temper it just in case it ever cracked, it would crack safely into a million little rounded pieces so that they weren't shards of glass. But I think I paid about, now this is gonna get a little expensive for glass, but this was 3 8 glass and I think I paid, it was around $70 for this piece, but I just love working with the glass because it's really clear, the light can go through it real easy, uh, it's heavy so it doesn't blow off of the propagation frame. So I really like working with that stuff, but you can use anything, you can use acrylic, you can use polycarbonate, you can use saran wrap if you had something strong enough to hold it onto but uh, just something clear. So that's it really. The only other thing I would add to this little setup is you've got to have something for the bottom. Now I'm in my hoop house you can see here and so I'm just going to put this on the floor of my hoop house but in you know obviously I've got gravel under this and then I've got this uh, weed cloth right here so nothing can come up through this but if I had this outside on the soil what I would do is put some quarter inch or one inch some type of a hardware cloth like a, you know a metal grate on the bottom just something cheap that you can get at any farm supply store then I would turn this upside down and just staple it underneath all the way around or you don't even have to staple it you can just set it on top and the weight of this is going to hold it down in fact you probably shouldn't staple it because then you can take it apart at some point point. and then the other thing you can do is just put a piece of fabric like a, a weed shield that is permeable to water so water can go through it and doesn't sit in the bottom because you want this frame to drain really really well so you would put those down on the ground and then put this this frame right on top of it like i said i'm in my hoop house so i'm just going to put it right on the ground right here as we sit so real quick the positioning of this frame is going to be like it always needs to be 
out of direct sun, but with plenty of overhead light. So you want to put this in a shadier location where you've got light from the sky, but you've got no direct sun going through that glass or plastic because it will cook your cuttings. So the north side of a building, if you live in the northern hemisphere, south side of a building, if you live in the southern hemisphere, so you just want to make sure no direct light is hitting that thing. I'm putting mine in my hoop house. This is 50% shade cloth, so the direct sun doesn't really beat on it too bad. Sometimes it gets a little warm in propagation totes in here, even though it is 50% shade cloth. If that happens, I'll kind of assess the situation and figure out where I'm going to go from there. I might put a piece of wood behind it. You could put it on the north side of a building, south side of a building to keep it away from direct sun, or you could put it out in the open. And that's when I, when I first started doing this setup, I would put it right out in the open in full sun, but then I would put a piece of, of uh, plywood leaning up against it so that it blocked the sun from going into the glass. The one thing you want to be careful with if you're going to do something like that is that you secure it some way. Otherwise, I've had the wind not it over or flip the wood off and I actually one year had the wood flip over and break the glass and there were shards of it everywhere so you want to be careful with that make sure it's secure otherwise just make sure you're out of the full Sun but you got plenty of overhead light so the next thing I'm gonna do is just fill this whole frame up with uh, a medium that you can stick your cuttings into so what I'm gonna use is gonna be my fine fur bark because it's plentiful in this area you can get it cheap enough at the local uh, landscape supply stores and I get it by the truckload but what I would what I would prefer to do in this frame would be to use sand sand works really well for softwood cuttings and in fact we're going to actually take some semi hardwood cuttings or plants that you would normally take as semi hardwood cuttings but i like to take these plants a little bit earlier in the season so they're almost somewhere between softwood and semi hardwood but for summertime propagation this kind of frame with sand works exceptionally well because it drains really well and the plants root so quickly and so vigorously that when you're going to pull them up it's a lot easier to work with in the sand you can get your hand underneath it and pull them out of there and once you're you know once you get them up you can kind of shake some of that sand off and then pot them up is when you use the bark those roots really get intertwined in everything and it's harder to get them apart but that's what I have here so that's what I'm going to use I recommend you guys use a good uh, coarse sand and just fill the frame up to maybe an inch from the top here or maybe even all the way to the top you want to make sure though that it drains well so you want to fill it high enough you don't want just a couple inches I in fact I would probably fill this frame right here this uh, like I said, seven inches, I would probably fill this all the way to the top with sand. All right, guys, so I got the frame filled with the fine fur bark, and what I would use for, if I were you, is the sand, like I was talking about, but if this is all you've got available, or you have some other material available in your area that's cheaper, then just use that, but the sand works really well for these types of cuttings. Now, I want to talk about the size of this, because I know a lot of you are probably wondering. The size doesn't really matter when it comes to this frame. It's just whatever size you can deal with, whatever size you want to deal with, so it could be you know 12 foot long it could be this size it doesn't really matter but because I know a lot of you are probably going to be wondering let's go ahead and measure it so this right here is 20 inches by 40 inches so I've got a 20 by 40 frame and I built this at a time when uh, I was doing something else with it I ended up using this I cut my glass to fit this after the fact the glass turns out to be 22 by 42 and the reason for that is I wanted to have an inch overhang all the way around the entire frame so water could run off of it if it rained or anything like that but um, the glass was uh, 22 by 42 and fits this frame perfectly you can fit a ton of cuttings in this frame I mean a ton and you can pack them in tight and those softwood cuttings are really going to root tremendously fast in this frame and they're going to do awesome in here and you could actually leave this thing in here through the winter if you wanted to um, leave all the softwood cuttings in here through the winter uh, and just let them overwinter in this frame so it's just it's the perfect setup for softwood cuttings all right so now I'll get my lid here for the frame and let's see I'm gonna use this side probably flip this over a little bit dirty all right and we're gonna set that right on top and that works out really nice there so what we've got let's take a look at this guys so what we've got is a frame filled with our 
rooting medium down in here and then we've still got five and a half inches going up the side of this here for the cuttings to sit on sit in now um, a point to kind of keep in mind here is a lot of people are probably wondering what about this gap right here i actually like that gap now there's airflow let's see we'll have to get it from the other side here there's actually an air gap you see that right through the boards because they're not perfect I actually like that gap. It allows for lots of airflow. Now this is a little bit different than the totes. They're not completely sealed, but because they're not sealed on the bottom, you can actually water these things all day long. The water will drain out the bottom and you won't have standing water. That's good because there's constantly plenty of moisture to create more and more humidity, even though some of it's getting lost through here. Now what that also does is it allows a slight amount of airflow to constantly be moving from these cracks up through and out where the cracks in the glass are going to be because it's not a completely sealed fit that little bit of airflow helps cut down on fungus issues and just recirculates new fresh moisture in this little tote constantly so i really like doing it this way that gap is not a problem it's actually a good thing so now that we've got our oh the other thing the other point i want to make is this frame right here is this particular one is only five and a half inches tall. And so a lot of cuttings will do well in there, but I, I actually, if you guys are gonna go build one of these, would prefer to have built this a little bit taller, maybe even with 10 inch lumber, because you want some head space in there. That way all the heat can float up to the top and not be around the top of the cuttings. You want that heat to get out of there because you want the tops cooler, right? So if I were you and you're gonna go build one of these, make sure that you do this with a little bit taller lumber and do it in two sections. That way you can tear it down and you can rebuild it somewhere else if you need to. Um, I would not screw these two boards together. I would just leave it you know, in a rectangle pattern like you've got here. That way you can take it down at some point in the future and move it anywhere you need to. But uh, that's the frame basically. Let's get the glass on. All right, so there we go, guys. We've got everything set up right. We've got our frame, we've got our glass lid, and now we just need to water. This bark was a little bit on the drier side, so I'm gonna need to water it before I stick my cuttings. I'm not actually gonna stick these today. I'm gonna water this bark in real good and make sure it soaks up tons of moisture. The cool thing about this frame is, it's not like the plastic coat. You can actually over water this frame and it will drain right through. Really, really slick, really nice, and I really like that aspect about this. All right, guys, so here it is. We've got our frame, we've got our glass lid, and the humid we've watered it well. The humidity is gonna build up really nicely in here, even though we've got some gaps where airflow is. So that's not a problem at all. And this is just, man, it's so simple. It is so simple, so much better than those plastic toes. Like I said, I use those for experiments, but this is what I use for production of uh, plants through the summertime for soft wood and just barely going into semi hardwood plants But this is what I would use if I were you I'm not saying to throw out the totes They're they're fun to use and and I use them for experiments around here But if you're wanting to get serious about this and really have a lot of fun and have a high success rate build one of these It's it's cheap to build. It's not a major issue The most expensive part is going to be the glass you can use any lumber I recommend cedar or pressure treated lumber, but you can use regular lumber. The reason I recommend this is because regular lumber will actually build up molds on the side over time. These won't. And if you're worried about the pressure, the treated aspect of it, I've never had a problem in any of my propagation frames with any chemicals from the treated lumber killing cuttings or anything like that. And the wood lasts for a long, long time. Um, if it were me, I don't know what, how much money you guys have to invest, but I would buy a glass lid. It's heavy, it's nice. Make sure that you get at least three eighths thick, but you don't want it heavier than you can move. You don't want it so huge, you know, the frame's so huge that you've got this giant piece of glass you can't move because glass gets heavy. This is just about right for me, and it's not a problem to move around at all. But uh, get it tempered so that it doesn't shatter if it ever did break, but... Um, 
I highly recommend this frame and it's an outstanding way to propagate cuttings. All right guys, so we got the frame built. Wasn't that easy? Nice and simple. It's not a difficult frame, but we've got everything set up. We've got it all ready to go. In the next video in this series, we're gonna go out there and start propagating plants. I know you guys are gonna be excited about this, so go ahead and click on that video now and let's get started. So guys, if you've been watching me for any length of time, then you know by now that I am obsessed with plant propagation. I absolutely love it. I love propagating all different types of plants. Now mainly, I propagate rhododendrons and grow them on in my landscape, but I just love all kinds of plant propagation. And I want to tell you right now, the frame that you're learning how to build in this little video series is an outstanding frame for summertime cuttings. But if you want to get super, super serious about this, and you want to go to the next level with me and learn how to build a frame that will propagate plants any time of year, softwood, semi-hardwood, hardwood, and does an impeccable job at propagating th these things with high, high percentage rates, then you need to click the link below, go to my website, I'll put the link in the description, go to the website and get in the members area. In the members area on the website, I show you how to do everything that I do here. I show you, it's a two hour video that just shows you how to build the perfect plant propagation system. And I'm telling you guys, this comes from over 12 years of experience doing this stuff. A lot of trial and error thousands of dollars spent and you guys can have all of that right now so go click on the link go to the members area and get that also in the members area is four more hours of video three hours of it is just showing you everything I do I go through a whole entire year of propagating these rhododendrons and show you step by step every detail about plant propagation what I do around here so I leave no stone unturned so you guys get all of the information you want I get so many questions on YouTube here and on Facebook about you know what works for this or what works for that and what am I doing wrong here or how do I do this part of it and I'm telling you guys I spent over a year filming this and going through every detail I could possibly imagine and I put it all in that three hour video and then there's one more hour of video. actually it's over an hour a video Video telling you how I sell these things to nurseries, how I sell them retail and wholesale, and just all different ways that you can sell and make money at this business. It's a lot of fun, so I highly encourage you guys, if you want to take this to the next level, you saw, you've seen me do all of this in plastic totes in the past, over the past year. You've seen me use plastic totes. We're going to a new level now. It's simple, but we're going to a new level, and I'm showing you guys how to become super successful with this. So if you want to go to an even higher level, if you want to go to a better frame, a better system, and learn everything that I do here, click on the link down in the description there, go to the website, get in the members area, and you'll be a member for life. So I hope to see you guys there. If you like the video, please like it. Subscribe if you want to follow along, and have an awesome week. I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.